uh, today we're going to be doing somewhat of an art tutorial. I've had a few people ask how to make some good like visual effects. So that's what paint mode is all about. So we're going to go ahead and head in there. Um, there's quite a few things in here, um, such as, for example, your flex. And then if we go to tools, we got different types of stuff in here. Like you can just stamp flex instead of actually painting, or you can use brush flex, which is, you know, quite a standard affair of painting. And there's drawing, which is pretty much the same as brushing, but instead of the pressure being opacity, it's the size of your brush, which is really good to make weird kind of like effects like that or like to get a blood drop or some dripping material like that. And then of course we have rule flex, which is just a line. That's pretty helpful. Um, and I wanted to go over few things with this before we get doing any visual effects. So I'm going to go ahead and make a wall because the best way to make like any type of art with the um, paint mode is you want to have a flat surface in front of you. You want to make sure you have studio lighting on or you don't have to have studio lighting on. It just helps with colors. Um, and then we're going to go ahead go back into paint mode and then you want to go to guides and we're going to do tentacle snap and that's actually not tentacle stamp but surface stamp that's going to make the fleck up against the wall completely um, and basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to go ahead and do this initial stamp here or just yeah our initial stamp so i'm going to just get the stamp tool and then I'm going to go ahead and scope out. And one thing that paintings do by default and is kind of like if you want to get better results painting, like if you're painting a picture or something, um, then you want to go ahead and open up the properties of your painting, like scope out of editing it. Then you want to go to flag properties and you want to turn impasto to negative 100%. That's going to get rid of like any like verticality of your uh, painting at all so if for example you were trying to do like the I had like an emoji in like my memes game that was a painting and like everything was like popping out like it was like acting as if it was like thick instead of just a flat picture because I painted it without um, flattening it like this so when I was adding on top of it it was adding like space between the flex as well as um, of course being another layer so in order to actually get a decent looking picture it was like a big sandwich a flex sandwiched instead of a uh, like just directly painted on top of each other so I think if we do this now keep stamping on top of it we should get something more flat but you can see that there is even still some verticality like this so you want to be careful of that so you want to do the least amount of strokes possible I guess to say because you're gonna get this like 3d effect I wish I really wish they didn't have that I really wish it was just like the least amount of space possible because you can see that there's just a lot of space between these flicks. I mean, it's good for some things, but in this case, if you just want to make like a drawing of something, like of a picture you found online, that's not the way to do it. And there's no real way to avoid it other than not using Surface Snap, which is also not easy to do so because you have to like manage your Z position 
which is this. All right. So now that I got that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually make a effect. So one common effect is fireworks or explosions. So that's pretty easy to do. All you want to really do is you want to make a few lines. So I'm going to turn off surface snap and I want to use um, draw flex or yeah that works. And you want to get something nice and streaky so straight and I want to see how big it is. So if you tap the scale buttons it shows you how big it is. I want the color to be let's do some red and then blue so I'm gonna get blue first see that's an issue right there we don't want that for a firework so I guess in this case going against the wall with surface snap is the best thing to do because we get a nice flatter effect I guess it should be flatter yeah, you'd think that um, it wouldn't scatter like it does. I want it so it like the lines face out like this. Not entirely sure how to get it to do that. Maybe if we use different type hatching. Oh yeah, that looks really nice. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. What is that? There we go. And so if we just do this and then slowly release the trigger, it's going to fade out like that. That's a little bit... I don't know why it's not giving me the result I want. So if I think we just use more of a squarish or just standard... Um, stroke we're gonna get something better like that so now we have like a nice trail and an epicenter point now let's add in some color or additional colors since this is a firework and we'll do something like this Right now that we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. I think that was left over. And you may say, okay, this doesn't look anything like a firework. Well, we can actually, first of all, I'm gonna turn off studio lighting. I'm gonna make it glow, like so. Then we wanna go to duplicates, and we want duplicates in all directions. But I think I screwed up by, yeah, I screwed up. Okay, that's my fault. That's because I had that little painting over here before we uh, started that, and it was the same painting, so the position was not correct. So let me go ahead and redo that. We'll use hexagons this time. Try to get this as fast as possible. That is the pen. I mean, not pen, but... Eh. Now we want red. Just gonna copy this, rotate it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple extra sparks right there. Now this should give us the effect we want when we duplicate it. Yep, that's what we want. 
all directions and we get a nice little explosion effect and you can get a scale jitter as well more copies and then we can go to animation and this is the important part um, you want to do go ahead and up the playback speed a lot and you want to turn on pulse and if you turn off repeat you can see the effect like so there we go so now we got a nice firework so if I turn on preview invisibility no it's not gonna show us well let's see what happens if we go back in here Well, we can loop it. Animate in sequence. That may be a little bit better. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I think that animates in the sequence that you actually painted the strokes. So if we do a bit faster on that. That looks good either way. Depends on what you use and what you're using it for. So now we got a nice like firework explosion. What about like a laser beam or something like that? Let's do that. So if we go back into paint mode, we can go ahead. Let's do like a nice Star Wars laser or something. I'm gonna get the red, and I'm gonna use the circle fleck. Just make a nice line. Fill it in. Then I'm going to go ahead and get white color. Alright, there we go. Now let's see what happens. Well, probably want to copy this uh, white to the other side as well. I guess that's fine. And then we want to turn up glow. And possibly turn off emit light, since it is a laser, it's not going to give off that much light, but we want it to glow. And let's see what happens if we fade in and out. Nah, I don't like that. Turn down flight density, nah. I think what we want to do is... no, no. No, 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 no. That looks cool. I think even if we animate that. No. Okay. Uh, no. No. I'm not the go to guy for stuff like this, but what I probably want is to give it some kind of impasto, actually. Maybe. No? I mean, I guess that would work if it wasn't for the white disappearing. I think this looks cool. <laughs> what I'm looking for is like a copy like this. Not sure why I wasn't able to find it, but this is like a common, like, thing that they used to do in like really old games. This, if you wanted something 3D, you would just make it flat and copy it a bunch like so. And then when you're looking at it from s other than straight on, any direction, it's like this. Which looks cool. Looks like a 3D laser bolt, but I guess you could make a physical one. Like a sculpt, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, that was just 
be playing around with the painting mode, I guess. Um, where is our explosion? Another thing that we can do is let's try to make some nice realistic fire. So I'm getting an orange color and then I'm going to go ahead and say that we want this parquet, I think maybe. That looks nice for fire, right? And you notice that it's flat. Well, we don't want it flat, so we can actually turn up the scatter and we're going to get a more physical effect like this. And I turned up the scatter by editing the shape with L1 and square, and you can do that over here as well. Edit Fleck. And let's also get some white in there. Hate grabbing these things sometimes. There we go. Now we can go ahead and turn up the brightness on this. And we're going to animate it with animation. No, we don't want to do that. We want it to flow basically. So if we go into effects, flow. Now, I think if we go into the style mode, I might be able to comb it. Yep, there it is. So now we get fire effect going that way. You can get a better comb by using the volume brush tool, like so. And we might want to, as well, turn on fade in. Maybe fade out. No, just fade in. Now we get a nice flame effect. Turn up the speed of the flow, maybe. Give it a little bit of a boil. No waves uh, throb. That's what we want. I'm not seeing these effects at all. Oh, because they're coming from that top down. That's great. Evaporate. No, that does not look good at all. Boil? Yeah, that looks fine. Again, I'm I'm not I'm not the perfect guy to go to for stuff like this. Not very good with the art tools. But since somebody requested it, I guess I do know the very basics. I mean I know how to make that. I just don't know how to make good looking <laughs> fire. I've seen really nice looking fire before, like this, like I'm not sure entirely how to make this, well it looks like that these are their own flex, and I think this is physical actually. So, he basically did, I think this parquet thing that we did, I think this is the same fleck that we had, yeah, maybe even this similar color, that is definitely the same fleck, yep, can even add to the fire. And then move it back in. There we go. So yeah, you want to use that bouquet. I think he basically layered it. I wonder what happens if we select both of them and make them one painting. Yeah, that doesn't look nearly as good. So I guess layering in this case, if you want like different like because it's 
not going the same way physically. What? Group. What do you mean group? Oh. Yeah, if we go to the physical properties, he has it physical. And it's floppy, wind strength. Stuff like that. And then it's, of course, animated. So that looks really nice. There was... Let's see what this looks like. That looks nice. There was like one that I used on a stream a while back ago. That... Was really good. Can't seem to find it anymore though. I don't think I'm gonna find it in re re recent. No. No, not at all. This one looks nice. Yeah, this is it, I think. That's just a bunch of circles going up, and. I can't tell what that stroke is, but I know this one is circles. I think the opacity is down. That's might, might have been what made the real big difference there. I don't know. But yeah. Um, that's how you use the paint tool and how to get nice visual effects, I guess. Explosions, stuff like that. You can also use the frame by frame, which I guess I can show off here. It's not, like, it's something that artists would know on the, like, any other, like, like, animating program, for example, Flash would have it, is onion skinning. And onion skinning is basically just showing the next frame. So I think if we, yeah, if we do L1 and D-pad, you can add frames and switch between frames pretty easy. Onion skinning is going to show you what the previous frame was. So if we do a circle here, this is frame 1. And then frame 2 is going to show you a faint outline of that circle. It might be hard to see, but it's there. And then I'm just going to make a bigger one, and then next frame I'll make an even bigger one. Next frame, even bigger one. And then next frame is going to be our last frame, and we'll do just a really small one. I don't know. There we go. Now it should animate and play automatically. Go to... No, we're getting the sculpture. I want... This. I want the painting. Give me the painting. There it is. Animation. Frame by frame. There we go. Frame. Change the speed. Stop motion movement. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, okay. Uh, basically, if you're moving the painting around, it'll look better if you do that thing, apparently. But, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a good artist, so, yeah, I'm not sure why you guys ask me for art tutorials. <laughs> okay, well, uh, thank you for watching this very poorly made video. I think um, there is other artists that make better art tutorials out there, like um, I think Dirty Heralds, like he did a tutorial on how to make a, he did a tutorial on how to make a turtle, I believe. Yeah, I think that was it. Um, I think, if anything, I might make a better video one of these days of this after talking to Snags or I don't know, I feel like if I had a guest on, that'd be great. Like, from uh, Mad GFX, anybody of them would be able to point out better art stuff than I would be able to. So, 
Hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, you know, all, you know all the jazz. And I also got a Patreon if you want to support me on that. Private Discord server with Mad GFX crew in there and uh, a few other popular um, people in the Dreams community. Alright, uh, have a nice rest of your day. Bye.